Welcome to LOA Today. I'm Walt Thiessen here with, along with a boogieing Alex. <laughs> and today is Thursday, September the 19th, 2019 at 4 p.m. New York time. That's 1 p.m. in Los Angeles, 9 p.m. in London, 5 a.m. in Tokyo, and 6 a.m. in Sydney, Australia, wherever you are in the world. Thank you for joining us for another episode of LOA Today, your daily dose of happy and uh, I'm not quite happy enough to be able to announce that Joel's back, but he is working on it. He's making progress. He gave yep. me an update today, and uh, we're hopeful. We can't tell you when it's going to happen because we don't know when it's going to happen, <laughs> but he is working on it. And as soon as we know, maybe, you'll know. Maybe as soon as next week. It could be. It, it's very right. possible. It could be as soon as next week that he'll be joining us again, and boy, is that going to be fun because I yes. love the conversations we have. I mean, it's great. You know? I actually had a dream about Joel last night, even though I have no idea what he looks like. <laughs> It was so weird. Well, that's not unusual for me because I don't do a lot of visualizing in my dreams anyway. My dreams are more auditory and touch and experience and, you know, uh, just sort of just general real estate. There's not a whole lot of vision in my dreams. So that wouldn't be unusual for me. Oh, no. Mine's very visual. Yeah. So very unusual for you. Yeah. Yeah. Very okay. weird. Like him and his son came to visit me. And this was in the future, too. Okay. Him and his son came to visit me and because I guess they were looking at colleges and decided to stop by the Cape. And I was like, and you knew. To Harvard. He, you knew they were coming, but you didn't tell me. And he like popped up behind me. He popped up behind me while we were on the podcast and it was Halloween. And I was like, hi, what are you guys doing here? Like I knew him, knew him. You know what I mean? It was right, so right. weird. Oh my God. <laughs> and I just woke up like, what? <laughs> well, considering his son is barely a teenager, this is well in the future that you're doing. Well in the future. That's why I was, I woke up and I was doing the math. I was like, hold on. <laughs> I was like, was that a premonition? What's happening? <laughs> we'll have to, we'll have to make note of this one and just yes. remember, you know, five or six years down the line and, and yep. see what happens. Yeah. You know? Maybe that's what, maybe that's what he ends up doing. Maybe he ends up going to MIT. Who knows? Maybe. Not by maybe. the game on the way, you know, it's yep. kind of on the way. It's not on the way, but. <laughs> well, sort of. I mean, you're, you're not all that far from 95, so why not? That's true. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> it's only about two hours. You know, it's cool. <laughs> And a well worth it two hours, I might say, because first right? of all, you get to visit Alex. The second of all, you have the cape. I mean, that's a Hello. main combination, no matter how you look at it. Yep. So, yeah. So, anyway, we were talking before the show today about mm-hmm. uh, topics and about stuff going on in our lives. And as soon as you mentioned what you wanted to talk about, I said to myself, well, that certainly fits what I've been dealing with in my life because mm. not so much uh, – well – the topic is, is specifically related to illness and health and so forth, right. but it also has just applied in every area of, of like my minute to minute existence over the last few days. Mm-hmm. There's just mm-hmm. one opportunity after another to, to choose between, okay, do I want to focus here? Do I want to focus there? And right. what are the results coming out of that? Mm-hmm. So now that I've teased people without telling them what the topic is, why don't you tell people <laughs> what the topic is? Uh, today's topic, we're going to delve deeper into Walt's theory about health and how it's all in our minds. Mm-hmm. And I have to also put two disclaimers out there. First, we're not medical doctors. <laughs> yes, we're not. And second of all, it actually But I watch a lot of Green's Anatomy, yet. so I'm basically a doctor. <laughs> you, can, you can at me if you want to. <laughs> okay, okay. She does have her own LOA Today address, by the way. I do. <laughs> <laughs> But no, seriously, it is a, a it's a very interesting topic, and mm-hmm. I can't actually take credit for it because I got it from Abraham Hicks. Okay, all right. So this, this is something that Abraham has told people through um, the, the teachings that Esther passes along um, mm-hmm. at the various workshops that she does, and literally they they have told us that every single thought that uh, I'm sorry, every single uh, disease, every single um, health condition that we experience originated in a thought process somewhere along. Mm-hmm. And at first I was resistant to the idea, but over time I've been paying really close attention and kind of comparing what goes on in my life, what goes on Mm -hmm. in the lives of people I know and care about, you know, what, what, what I've been able to detect. Cause I can't, it's not like I'm omniscient. I can't see everything that goes on in Alex King's life. I mean, I can see what we talk about in the podcast. That's about it. Which is basically omniscient because I tell you everything anyway. So it doesn't (laughs) matter. This is true. (laughs) (laughs) This is true. But nevertheless, you know, there, I'm sure there are some things that I don't know because, you know, first of all, it's only an hour. And second of all, there <laughs> no. Dude, no, 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 it's all out there. Okay. It's all out there for all the world to see. 
<laughs> okay, well then, maybe you're not a good example. But, uh, <laughs> well, you can't see everything in everyone's life. Well, let's just put it that way. We'll leave it that way, yeah. Okay. And, and so because of that, you know, a lot of the time we're just inferring. We're making inferences based on what we see happen or what we hear somebody say or whatever. Mm-hmm. And those inferences obviously are going to be tied to what we experience in our own lives. And, right, personal experience, yeah. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I I think from that we can kind of conclude, yeah, there's 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 a pattern if we can look for it, if we can notice it. I, and I yes. have seen that pattern. Okay. I've seen people who routinely are focused on X, and X isn't really a happy topic, and it, it, it affects other areas of their lives. And then over time, they develop uh, an illness, or mm-hmm. they develop a chronic condition of some kind. Mm-hmm. Um, numerous authors have written about it. Okay, so you're saying it's negative thinking in general that puts people in a bad space that that deteriorates their health. Is that what no, you're saying? I, I wouldn't I wouldn't call it negative thinking. I would call it focusing on what they don't prefer and what they don't. Okay, want. but I would because initially when you said it, I was thinking that they're like focusing on the specific um, issue that they have or no, or no, no, yeah. Okay, I, see I that's what anybody, I was interpreting. I don't think anybody, for instance, goes out of their way to acquire cancer or Alzheimer's. Right. I, I don't see that. That doesn't make that's, sense. That's okay. That's where I was confused. Yeah. Okay. But I do believe that if you're constantly focusing on stuff that, mentally speaking, gives you a heart attack, and then you end up having a heart attack, you know, there's there's a certain correlation going on there. Right. Yeah. You know? You're right. And you see that often enough, you begin to think, you know, maybe Abraham really is right. Maybe our thought pattern really is is driving what's going on with our our health experience. Or mm-hmm. lack thereof. Yeah, yeah. I saw it with my mom. I talked about that um, the last yep. time you and I talked. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've seen it with, with a lot of different people. So is it a controversial idea? Yeah, oh, sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, you told me yourself, you had, you had a friend who listened who wondered if I was attacking you. Because yeah. you talked about <laughs> how, you know, if you have anxiety, you attracted anxiety, you know. And yeah. You, and, and you focus on things that make you anxious. Well, I wasn't really attacking Alex, promise. I really wasn't. I mean, it doesn't help that everything makes me anxious, so it's like there's, I have no options here. <laughs> Except doing the podcast for some strange reason. No, that know. doesn't make me anxious. That's the one yeah. hour a day I get, you know. Of, I mean, I'm, I'm pleased time. that we're a part of the non-anxiety side of, of Alex. Community. Yes. That's distraction is key. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't think it's just distraction. I think it's actually choosing to focus on what you like. That too. That too. You you like doing the. I think you like this doing this doing this podcast as much as I do. I, I do. I get the feeling that you just live for the next time slot. Like when's it coming? When's I it coming? definitely do. Yeah. That's the way I feel about it too. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and I think that makes all the difference. Louise and I were talking last night <laughs> mm-hmm. about stuff going on in our lives, and and um, part of it was about her health because her health has been improving. Yep. Um And also, she's still not. I guess you might say she's not out of the woods because mm-hmm. doctors are continuing to tell her all these horror stories about where her condition is likely to lead to, none mm-hmm. of which have a happy ending. Right. And we're all in the place of, you know, first of all, we don't buy into it. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're, we're, neither one of us is willing to say, well, yeah, the doctor's right. Yeah. And second of all, we really do believe that if we can just find the right path, so to speak, mm-hmm. we can we can help her leave this thing behind. Yeah. Even the doctor says so to a certain extent. He says, well, there's only, there's maybe a 10% chance that you won't, you'll be able to get rid of the medication at some point. We'll take that 10% chance. We'll take 10%, sure. <laughs> yeah. 10% is a whole lot better than 1%. Right. <laughs> Done a lot more with a lot less. So. Absolutely. So that's, it's definitely within range. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, I, I, I've just become more and more a believer in what Abraham mm-hmm. has told us. So now, now that you understand that I'm not saying that you actually attract brain cancer by thinking you're going to get brain cancer. Well, literally, that's what I was thinking. I was like, okay, so every time I go to the doctors, because I do do this. Like today, I had, went, I called my doctor because I, I saw a rash, and I was like, damn it, I have shingles again. And I was like, so, so I, I went into the doctors, and I was like, yeah, I got shingles again, I'm telling you. And she was like, nah, I think it's a bug bite. And I was like, oh, okay, well, this is a wasted trip. <laughs> <laughs> But the whole time, that's what brought the su- subject up today. The whole time I was thinking, well, it's going to say, I told myself I had shingles and I got shingles. <laughs> well, it, it doesn't have to work out that directly. Yeah, I guess it's possible. Sure. If you if you keep convincing yourself you have cancer, you're probably going to get cancer or something. Mm-hmm. You know, that's just, that's certainly a very direct uh, connection. But yeah. it doesn't have to be that. It can simply be focusing on a whole bunch of stuff that you don't like that mm-hmm. makes you feel rotten. And so mm-hmm. your body has to 
kind of match the vibration and start to feel right. rotten. And so it finds right. the answer as a way to do that, you know? So either way, I mean, both the direct way and indirect way, I think they both qualify. Um, Jeffrey actually is uh, jumping into on the topic. He says, topic on my mind, change. How do we recognize old patterns? Which is a great question. It ties in directly Ooh. to this. Old, old patterns are what drive this kind of thing. Yes, yes. And then how do we change those patterns, he asks, once we've recognized them? Well, I mm-hmm. think the second part is actually easier than the first part. I was going to say, I feel like the second part is answering your own question. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. once you've realized that it's a pattern, it's it's a lot easier to change. Absolutely. You know, yeah. you know Knowing is half the battle. It's a whole battle. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, it isn't even a battle at that point. If it's still a battle, you might want to take another look at what you're thinking. About. <laughs> Listen, and that's what G.I. Joe taught me growing up. <laughs> so, so this is what I know. <laughs> life life taught by a G.I. Joe doll. That's pretty cool. Yeah. It wasn't the doll. It was the TV show. At the end of every TV show, it was like, Whoa, no, that's where the, knowing is half the battle. That's where the show comes from. It comes from a doll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but well, I wasn't playing with the doll. I was watching the show. Well, I know that. Yes. <laughs> it's not like you pull the string and well, actually, I think you did pull the string and it said no in the top of battle. <laughs> I'm gonna ask my brother. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's funny. <laughs> and by the way, your friend uh, Nathan's tuning in. He's commenting. Great show. We, we aren't even ten minutes into the show, and he thinks it's a great show. We're doing pretty well. <laughs> Hi, Nathan. <laughs> I think he does it just for the shout out. <laughs> well, that's okay. We, we don't yeah, that's fine. Shout out. <laughs> hey, we love having people tune in to the live stream. That's fine. We do. We do. In fact, why don't we break precedent? Because we usually don't do our promos early. Let's do the promos early. All right. Let's do them now. Don't get them done. So first and foremost, Nathan, I'm going to talk to you and we'll talk to everybody else who is not yet a subscriber. Maybe Nathan's a subscriber. Maybe I'm wrong about that. He is. I'm, I'm just going to pick him out, you know, <laughs> just because give him a little extra attention. <laughs> Those of you who are not yet subscribers, please, please become one, and it's very simple to do. A uh, couple ways to do it. One way is just whatever platform you use to listen to podcasts, just do a search on that platform, and LOA Today pops right up, and there you are. You just subscribe. But if for some reason you can't find us, just go to the website, LOAToday.net, and right at the top, you will see instructions in about three or four clicks on how to become a subscriber. And bang, just like that, you're a subscriber. Hooray! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> very, very difficult. Three or four step process there. It's kidding, hard. Kidding, kidding. <laughs> and, of JK. course, we want, we want you to uh, watch the live stream if you're able to join us because uh, we do the recordings now every Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. So we actually have a steady time slot, which we haven't had yes. for quite some time. Right. Yeah. So you know, feel free to join us on the live stream, and uh, you do that through YouTube, and mm-hmm. that's always where August jumps in and tells us how that's done. So how do they do it? Well, if you're not already watching us and you're not already subscribed, you can go to <laughs> LOA Today Podcast Videos and hit the subscribe button. And next to the subscribe button, and I've been mistaken with this because apparently they changed the button, and I just Oh, no. Out. Yeah. So next to the subscribe button, there's a little silver bell. And when you hit the silver bell, make sure you click all – not always, all, ah, <laughs> so you will always be notified when we're live. <laughs> there's, there's another example of what we were talking about before the show. We were talking exactly. before about people who are developers, website developers and software mm-hmm. developers and so forth, who do the front end, the part that the consuming public sees, mm-hmm. and it's like they're not paying any attention. No. But, here we have, here we have, it used to say always, right? I used to say always, so you'll always be notified when we're live. It which was like makes my sense. Thing. And yeah. now they've changed it to all, all. which makes yeah. less sense. Yeah. Note to developers, please <laughs> reconsider the way you're doing your developing. <laughs> because what you're doing does not make sense. Redevelop your way, developing. This is not the way to retain consumer base. You actually no. lose consumer base when you confuse your followers. Exactly. Does that really have to be explained? And I mean, I'm not going to speak for the entire human race, but like majority of us don't like change. So stop it. And and that's something I want the older developers to take notice of. Mm -hmm. Because the older developers believe that the millennials and youngers love the change because they adapted to it so easily. No, we we that's did, but we but that's what we like right there. So stop that's right. right there. Yeah. <laughs> don't don't change it. Yeah. <laughs> if it's if it ain't broke, don't fix it. There there used to be a concept. It still exists to some extent, but there mm-hmm. used to be a concept of of legacy of 
keep the old stuff and build new stuff in addition to it. Yes. Because now that's kind of turned into replace the old stuff. Yeah, unfortunately. And, and it's like, that's not even necessary. Right. I mean, 99 times out of 100, the extra code that it takes to do the new way mm -hmm. adds like kilobytes worth of information, stuff that, that will flow through your phone so quickly that you can't blink your eye fast enough mm -hmm. to keep up with it. Yeah. And yet, yet they're trying to get it whittled down so that little extra flow doesn't go in there. And that's why, I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. It, it doesn't. It doesn't. So in the spirit of being deliberate creators, we're not going to stay on that particular nope. point. We're going to turn it around and we're going to say, we love developers who actually create <laughs> user-friendly interfaces. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> You know, we should do a show develop, uh, devoted to that, to developers who actually make software easy for people to use. Yes, I have some interfaces I could definitely uh, give a shout out to. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I think we should do that. Maybe we'll do that Tuesday. What do you think? All right. Sounds like a plan. All right. I like good. having things scheduled ahead of time. <laughs> well, especially since you're taking on more and more of the social media announcements. So you know, I know, it's right? helpful <laughs> to know in advance what it is that we're doing, right? Yeah. <laughs> And I want to publicly thank you for taking on that role, too. I oh, really no totally problem. Appreciate. Yeah. Very Every little bit helps. <laughs> it really does. Yes. It makes a big difference. Yes. So, so, no, truly, thank you. I do appreciate the fact that you've been And then we'll beat it done correctly. I like that as well. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was like, how many, wait, what is this, our third week on the new schedule? And, and the new schedule hasn't been changed online? Yeah, I haven't changed it on the website. Yeah, I, I know, right? <laughs> I really have to get to I, I actually thought about it today, and I said, okay, I'm going to go do it right now, and then I took a phone call, and that was yep. it. It was done. Yep. I had the same problem. I was going to open my laptop, and then my aunt called, and then three hours later, here we are. <sighs> you know, eventually, I'll get there. Eventually. Yeah. I just can't tell you when the event will happen. <laughs> I'll do it. Don't worry about it. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, anyway, getting back to our original topic. Actually, Jeffrey has a comment I think that kind of ties into it. So why don't we start there? He says, so can we talk about change and the law of attraction, i.e. getting out of your comfort zone or dipping into the contrast? Ooh. Okay. Well, hmm. it, that, it does relate to the topic. It does. Because I believe that any time that we're, we have thought patterns that lead us eventually to get some sort of illness or chronic condition, Mm -hmm. We are doing, well, first of all, I know we're doing a lot of dipping in the contrast. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Some, some of us are dipping a little bit too much into the contrast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like alcohol. You don't want to have that much. You do it in moderation. No, right? everything in moderation, people. <laughs> in moderation, <laughs> yes. And uh, by the same token, now comfort zones, that, that's a topic that I wish Joel was here for because he loves talking about comfort mm, zones. Yes. Um, and, and I think probably he would say something like, you know, the moment that you're in your comfort zone is the moment that you realize that you're not all that comfortable. Right. Something, something close to that. Yeah. I live in my comfort zone, so I understand. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, maybe wait, double meaning. <laughs> I wasn't talking about my bedroom, but I did, was saying in my comfort zone, like that's just, that's how I survive. That's how I thrive. I, I can't, if I'm uncomfortable, it's, uh, it's too much. I can't handle it. So I live and in my comfort Joel zone. And Joel would point out to you that you don't do any growing when you're in your comfort zone. I know. And I'm fine with that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm comfortable with it. <laughs> you're comfortable with not growing. You're comfortable with staying comfortable. I am very, about to be 36. I am comfortable with who I am as a person. So this is this is it. <laughs> okay. Not, not going to say this is as good as it gets. I mean, you know, good stuff's going to happen. I'm just saying... Um, yeah, I don't see much changing. Meaning that you don't want much to change. I can't, I don't think I can handle much to change. Well, that's an interesting point because what you're talking about is a mindset that continues. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so I guess the question is, can that mindset lead to a positive result that you really want? Or can it lead to a negative result that you don't want? See, I like to I like to stay in the middle where nothing happens. It's neither positive nor negative. It's I like the void. <laughs> Sounds like Stephen Hawking. Ooh. <laughs> like he's a void. <laughs> no, 
that was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is Stephen Hawking. <laughs> Oh my god, you just confused everyone who's listening to the podcast and not watching. <laughs> Special guest today. <laughs> Special guest today. I didn't know I could do impressions. Oh, uh, me neither. <laughs> Dad jokes and impressions. Look at you. This now you scary. are growing, sir. <laughs> and I was, I talk about, uh, staying in a comfort zone. I, I reached my height, six foot eight, when I was mm. 18. And I wow. swore I wouldn't do any more growing after that. What I didn't realize <laughs> is that you can grow in other ways besides height. Mm. Mm. That was deep, sir. I like yeah. that. <laughs> well, it's also true. And to this yes. day, I'm still six foot eight, but mm-hmm. the other growth has just been phenomenal. Right. So now here's the, here's the question that comes out of that. Okay. Did I leave my comfort zone? Obviously you had to. I mean, times. from what I know about you, yes, you definitely left your comfort zone a couple of times. A, a, a lot of the times, what I thought was my comfort zone, it turned out I really didn't feel very comfortable in. But and I thought I did Joel's at the time. Point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But at the time, I would have told you I was comfortable. You know what? Thinking back, I feel the same way. Like, when I was in my depression, like, that was my comfort zone. Mm-hmm. And I didn't realize I was uncomfortable until I got out of it. Yeah. So... You make a good point, sir. Well, actually, Joel did. I just kind Joel of. Joel makes a good point, <laughs> as usual. He doesn't even have to be here anymore. Right? <laughs> just phones it in. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, though. Yeah. Very often, I, I, I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm going to say all the time when we're in our comfort zone, we don't realize how uncomfortable we are. Yeah. Yeah. Now that I'm looking back, I definitely see that point. Mm-hmm. Which makes me uncomfortable just thinking about it. <laughs> well, it makes me think what I'm, what's going to happen in the next five years when, when I'm looking back to today. Like, am I going to be you, sitting there? Is it going to be the same thing or am I going to be sitting there going, what was I think? I was so uncomfortable. What do you think I'm the next is going to be? I hope it's the latter. So when you're sitting here right now saying you just want to be in that middle space where nothing's happening, you're actually expressing discomfort. Um, no, I still want nothing to to happen, but, (laughs) but, um, hmm, I don't know. How am I, how am I going to describe this? Like five years from now, if you look back on this period where you were, where you wanted to not have to deal with any kind of feeling at all, you wanted that in between space. Yeah. How would you describe that from your perspective five years in the future? Avoidance. (laughs) Okay. I feel like I like things even. So if something bad happens, then something good has to come of it. Mm-hmm. And then, and that, and because it's, it's always even for me, that's what I mean about being in the middle and staying in the void. So now tying that into our question about health, does that feel to you like it is going to lead to a healthy outcome or to an unhealthy outcome? I feel like it, it'll be neither. Neither one. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, like, health won't have anything to do with it one way or the other. Um, hmm, interesting. I don't know. Because I always say I don't think about things unless they directly affect my life. Mm -hmm. And health definitely directly affects my life. Like, I don't don't know if we've had the conversation that last week I was diagnosed with CVS. So no, it's like, it's yes, up, actually, yeah. remember I was telling you how I've, I've been vomiting for like a year and we couldn't figure out what it was. Mm-hmm. So it turns out it's cyclic vomiting syndrome. Okay. So it's not just me being fed up with CVS and wanting to go to Walgreens instead. It's an actual <laughs> <laughs> goddamn receipts. It's an actual. <laughs> See, now, you just told the, the directors of CVS that they have to do a complete new rebranding and change the name of their store. No, I'm just saying, calm down with the paper, people. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> we don't, true. we don't need all those receipts. Like, put it on our phones. It's okay. That's we'll true. Figure they, it out. They, they tear down two or three trees at a time each time that a customer comes in the store. It's they just amazing do. how much stuff goes on. My mother receipt. asked the other day when we were getting our receipts. She was like, "How many times do you have to change the paper per day?" <laughs> No, no. And they were like, hour, "You wouldn't hour. even know." She was like, "It's unbelievable." The, the thing that's truly unbelievable is no one ever reads it. Oh, I do. I look for coupons. 
Do you really? <laughs> I do. I'm like, oh, they because love it's, you. It's always based on something you just bought. So I'm like, okay, yes, I will need shampoo, but see that they, they catch you with the expiration date because I won't need shampoo in two days. I just bought shampoo, <laughs> but I do get two dollars <laughs> off. That's how they try to catch you. See, I wouldn't know because I never read it, but it's interesting to know that they actually have a little trick like that going yep, on. Yep, they do. They're like, oh, you got to use it by the end of the month. And I'm like, but it, today's the 29th. What do you want right. from me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, the other thing is, too, it, it's probably a case of the paper is so cheap for them that, you know, all they have to do is get one person out of a thousand to buy mm-hmm. something that's worthwhile. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe not one out of a thousand, but. You know, one out of a hundred anyway. They are using one ply paper, so I understand. It's okay, one true. out of two hundred then. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy though. I saw a meme that said, um, th- the only way we have actual measurement of how far the moon is away from the earth is because of the CVS receipts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious, who was holding the other end of the receipt? <laughs> I don't know. It, it was just one hand and one hand, and it was and it okay. was a CVS receipt, and it was pointing towards the moon. It was hilarious, though. Mm-hmm. I died. I was like, it's so true, so true. <laughs> <laughs> and it seems, I, I mean, we're picking on CVS here. There are other stores that have long receipts. But they yeah, really but a lot of places have switched to the paperless, so like everything mm-hmm. shows up on your phone app now. Yeah, well, that's true. And, yeah. and then you also get places like Walmart who oh. get a lot of criticism for a lot of stuff, but they have some of the shortest receipts around. They sure do. Yeah, they're they're literally just the price now. It's just yeah. Walmart and the price, and that's it. That's about it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and a little note that says, "Why didn't you get this electronically?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hate when you have to choose the option, especially Kmart. Now I'm getting on Kmart because they're like, oh, do you want a paper receipt? Do you want a paper receipt and an email? Do you want? And I'm like, why can't I? Why can't I just do the email? Like, why is my reaction no is, well, that? there's another 60 seconds from my life I won't be getting back. Exactly. I'm like, I'm just sitting here going, oh my God. Just give me the damn receipt for goodness sake. Yeah. Ugh. It's like, do you want a receipt and an e receipt? No. I don't want to be reminded twice of how much money I'm spending here. <laughs> I'm surprised they don't do psychology, uh, not psychology, but um, market testing on. Yeah, market testing. Too many of those, you know. Oh, I would love to be a market tester because I would have so much things to say. That's an interesting question. Would you actually like it? Because, I mean, I've done market testing, and let me Mm -hmm. tell you, it's the most boring activity you could possibly do. I would only do it for interesting things like new TV shows or, like, you know, stuff like that. No, but my point is that most of the time you're doing really, really dull stuff so you can get five minutes of really interesting result. Nah, never mind. Cancel. <laughs> That's, I, I, mean, I don't have time I, in my schedule anymore. It's a good thing that computers do most of the work for us, but mm-hmm. nevertheless, I mean, you're just collecting huge amounts of really boring data waiting to finally find out whether or not your theory worked. No, nah, no, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care that much. Send yeah, me all the in, receipts. That's the in-between zone again, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's the comfort zone. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I, just, I don't want to have to compare about yeah, compare. I don't have to care about stuff like that. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's all it's, it's there's enough clutter up here. I don't need extra stuff. So, I'm going to kind of pin you down a little bit here. I've already expressed what my theory is or what uh-huh. my feeling is about the theory. What do you think about the theory? Uh, I see that now that thought process actually drives things like illness and health and chronic conditions and so on and so forth. I actually have a great example of how you are probably right. No. Oh, okay. Um, my uncle recently, I think it was March or May, just got diagnosed with stage four, um, stage four pancreatic cancer. Mm. So that's like the worst you can pretty much get, like other than like blood cancer or something. I don't know. But yeah, so he was going through the whole the whole steps of getting ready for chemo and mm-hmm. radiation and all that stuff. And then he just he just stopped and he was like, no, I'm not I'm not going to do that. Mm. And then he, you know, the whole family got together. and We're like, well, what do you mean you're not going to do that? What That's yeah. like, no, oh, that's how you get rid of cancer. You're going to die. Oh, my God. And, but except for, except for me, I was like, you know what? Do you, do you, mm. he was just like, you know what? God's going to have my back and I mean, it's going to take care of it. So he decided to go the herbal route and he's actually mm. doing much better than other people that are on chemo. Cause like he, there's this guy at his job diagnosed with the same thing. 
Oh, and he's my. doing chemo and he looks half dead. Yeah. And my uncle's like, he's still going to work every day. And he's like, and he told the guy, he was like, I haven't seen you in a while. What's happening? He's like, oh, I have stage four pancreatic cancer. And my uncle's like, me too. And he's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, yeah, the, the, as long as you have the right mindset, like, yeah, you can, you can pretty much work your way out of anything. So you could probably do the opposite, work your way into everything. And that first part is what Abraham really was emphasizing, mm -hmm. that, that literally, no matter how sick you are, no matter mm -hmm. how bad your condition is, if you can change your focus and, and, and change it fairly dramatically, you can heal yourself. Yeah. It really can be done, mm -hmm. which I find to be a very encouraging thought. Right. Not, not just about health, mm -hmm. but really about anything that mm -hmm. we want to attract into our lives, you know, whether it be money, relationships, homes jobs, careers, um, you know, new friendships, uh, new things to explore and to do, whatever it is, mm -hmm. how nice to know that no matter where we've been up until now, even though we, we've had, you know, the same thing happening over and over and over and over again, mm -hmm. if we can change our focal pattern, we can shift that result. That's a right. really encouraging thing, mm -hmm. I think. I like the fact that even though I'm totally contradicting what I said about myself earlier, um, <laughs> I decided that well, I've always known that, that getting my black belt was a life goal of something that I wanted to do. Hmm. So recently I ran into a friend and he, he, my only friend on the Cape, he, he goes to a karate class that's like down the street from me. Hmm. So he's like, he's just telling me, he was like, yeah, I'm about to get my yellow belt. I was like, I'm a blue belt. I'm way better than you. So we got into the whole conversation <laughs> about how I can kick his ass and <laughs> I was like, I'm going to come down there and show you. And then he's like, all right, do it. And then I was like, you know what? Why don't I go back to karate? And I was like, literally, like, even with the anxiety, I'm like, okay, if I can go out for an hour and be okay, I can, can take, I can take an hour long class twice a week and, ju and just do that for now. Absolutely. And it's literally only twice a week. It's only mm -hmm. an hour. Mm -hmm. So it's right around the corner. And uh, my service dog is allowed to come. So. I'm doing good it. combination. All right. Yeah. Good for yeah. you. Yeah. Fabulous. Hooray. Yay. So I'll be a black belt soon. No, All it's going right. to be a couple of years, but still. <laughs> it almost doesn't even matter. No, it doesn't matter. It, I don't care how long it takes. I'm just, it's, it's a life goal. I'm going to accomplish it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also the fact is, despite the fact that you earlier in the show were kind of waxing poetic about staying in your comfort zone, you just mm -hmm. took a step outside of your comfort zone. Well, karate is my comfort zone, though, because I've been doing it off, on, off and on for 20 years. Well, then maybe you expanded it because you had, you've been doing more off than on lately. Well, that's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> that is a fact. Yeah. yeah. It's been a strong 10 years since I've uh, been in a dojo, I'll tell you that. And, and that, I think, is a great point about a comfort zone because mm -hmm. truly we can expand a comfort zone. If we keep mm -hmm. expanding it and we keep expanding it and we keep expanding it, eventually it's no longer a comfort zone. But isn't it, though, like... Once you once you expand it and then you get used to it, it's your it's your new comfort zone. In on on one hand it is, on the other mm -hmm. hand it's no longer what it was before. So well, that's true. So it's, it's like soft. you're leaving your old comfort zone but getting a new one. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we do regularly anyway. Yeah, in life in general. Yeah. Even those of us who like you know crash through the comfort zone, we're still looking yeah. for the new comfort zone. Because that's just... my brother. My brother's like, you cannot have a comfort zone. You cannot get comfortable, or you just. But he's like a professional everything. So he's <laughs> <laughs> he's a professional boxer, a professional pr personal trainer, and everything. So he's like, and as soon as you get comfortable, you get fat. So <laughs> that's his theory. <laughs> but even there, there's a mindset. Yeah. That's a very definite mindset right mm -hmm. there, you know? Yeah. And now here's an interesting question. I think this ties in very strongly with this mm -hmm. idea that our mindsets create our health conditions. Mm -hmm. He has a very strong mindset that if you do anything to stay inside your comfort zone, you're going mm -hmm. to get heavier. You're going to get fat. Mm -hmm. So my question is, since we know that what you focus on, whether you focus on it positively or negatively, it doesn't matter which, mm. what you focus on, you get more of. Mm -hmm. what will happen with him? He's going to get more fat clients that he gets to train. That's what he's going to get. <laughs> it's an interesting way to build a business. <laughs> it is. <laughs> but businesses do that all the time. They try to hook sure. you in with the negativity. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, oh, my God, you're absolutely right. I hate my life. I should do this. <laughs> a lot of guilting going on. Yes, a lot of guilt tripping on, on yeah. commercials and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Yes. 
Gee, there, there's even guilt tripping in our audience because they they wanted us to they wanted me to feel guilty over having attacked you. <laughs> <laughs> so we guilt tripped them right back, like by telling them that they're not subscribers and they need to be. Did we really do it in that order? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm asking. I don't even remember for sure. Um, yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> okay. Now Jeffrey, as usual, is is typing out some good stuff to talk about. He says change is inevitable. Yes. He says we want controlled change. Yes. And, and then Nathan jumps in and says one good decision can change our lives for the better. Facts. So he. I think there's a there's a follow up to what Nathan points out, which is if that's true, then what's happening to our comfort zone every time we're changing? Mm, I still say it's becoming a new comfort zone. Uh huh. It's a more comfortable zone. Ooh, okay. <laughs> the living room zone. <laughs> the living room zone. The memory foam zone. The memory foam zone. <laughs> <laughs> It remembers me. <laughs> but Jeffrey's point is a good one. Change is inevitable, and we want controlled change. Do we get controlled change? No, we don't, but we want it so bad because we don't like the rug being pulled from underneath us. And here's where I'm wondering if maybe that's a misnomer mm. because control, well, I guess it depends what you mean by control. Yeah, you, know you, by control you can't control change. everything, but at the same time, like you want to be like, I, I, I know, I know in my life, I'm like, I don't like change unless I changed it. Mm -hmm. So I definitely agree with Jeffrey that we like control change. And yet control is literally what we're all about with trying to become conscious creators. We're trying to control mm. that aspect of our lives. Yep. That's true. You know? And in so doing, we often set ourselves up for uncomfortable situations. Mm. So my question there is, well, have we really lost control? Mm, I guess not. So apparently, control of change includes discomfort. I don't like you today. <laughs> <laughs> You're making me uncomfortable. <laughs> years and years of practice. <laughs> apparently, right? Yeah, you got a couple of years on me, so, you know, you had time. <laughs> it's just because I've been doing the podcast longer. So I've that too. There's all that different too. ways to ask questions. And, you know, yep. That's true. <laughs> it's like people who secretly make me do math. I don't like it. <laughs> secretly make you do math. Oh, that, no, I gotta yeah. hear that story. How did, how does somebody secretly make you do math? I don't know. They just, they just ask a question in the right way. And then I'm like, hold on. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> or like they'll, they'll purposely give me the wrong answer. And I'm like, no, that doesn't sound right. And then I gotta uh, figure it out for myself. Oh, I hate people like that. <laughs> so while uh, Alex is trying to figure out why it is that three plus five is ten, well, we're going to see if we can. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do that! She just gave me that look. <laughs> I forgot people can't see us both at the same time. <laughs> I forgot that part. <laughs> you did not see my resting bitch face. You didn't. <laughs> Oh you're, my god. You're, you're very fortunate. She, Seriously, five, six, seven. Okay. Don't it, do it's that. Only eight, I promise. <laughs> it's only eight. <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> but I was like, where did the other two come from? No, five plus five is ten. Stop it. Don't do that. <laughs> they, they came from my imagination. <gasps> oh, so you're using imaginary numbers. Okay. Well, mm. that's another branch of math, but that's okay. It is. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what they are. I just know because I skipped that class. <laughs> so oh, I, I, can thought, you, I, I can tell you what it is. You won't be any wiser for it, but I can tell you what it is. Well, do tell. Yeah, Maybe somebody in the of, audience wants to know. It's the square root of negative one. That's what an imaginary number is. I equals the square root of negative one. Yeah, you're right. I am no no more wiser for that. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't help at all. No, it does not. What, what, well, you have to understand, why do they even do that? Well, first yeah. of all, no, no one can possibly calculate the square root of, of negative one. Uh -huh. So what they do is they, they, they treat that as a what-if situation. Well, what if we could okay. actually calculate right. that? If we could mm -hmm. calculate it, it would create what we call an imaginary number. Uh, and if we having this imaginary number space, now we also we can start doing more things with math that we couldn't do before. Yeah, that's too much. Well, that's expanding the comfort zone. 
Yeah, I don't like it. I can't <laughs> can't, can't pass my toes. I'm not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, it would be more like splitting a toe, but well, yeah. Exactly. That's too much. See. <laughs> Yeah, see? No, 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 no. I don't even like opening the calculator app on my phone. Like, it's <laughs> it's already too complicated. I open the app calculator app once a month on my phone. That's do my bills, and that's it. <laughs> you actually do use it then? Uh, once a month. Once a yep. month. Yep, once because a month. you're kind of forced to. Yeah. Who's forcing you? Amazon. <laughs> I have to know how much I'm allowed to spend. <laughs> I got to do my bills so I know what's left over goes to Amazon. <laughs> and then I also got to calculate in my prime bill, in the bills. So, you know, it's Am- it's all Amazon's fault. <laughs> all right. I got to go off on a tangent. <laughs> yes. I, I, I just got to, I, I just have to, because this is, this has been a pet theory of mine for a long time, but I don't want to, okay. I don't want to voice the theory, the theory until I hear your answer to what I want to ask. Okay. Ooh, okay. I like this. So can you think back to, mm-hmm. I presume when you were in school is when you first developed your dislike of math. I'm guessing. Yep. That's yep. What it usually is. yep. Can you I can think actually back, pinpoint the day? But go good. Ahead. Okay. That's where I wanted yep. to go with it. Can you mm-hmm. tell, tell us what it was that made you decide you didn't like math? It was it is not only was it the first day that I decided I didn't like math, it was also my first experience with anxiety. Ah. So it's I have math PTSD, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I don't remember what grade it was. It was probably like second grade or something. And I got called up to the board and I didn't know the answer. And my brain froze. I didn't know how to calculate the answer without counting on my fingers, which you can do in second grade. Mm-hmm. But I felt like I was the smartest person in the class and I should know this. And then the teacher was like, well, now you're going to stand up there until you figure it out. Oh, boy. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of like you're going to finish your, your peas or you're not leaving the dinner table type of thing. And now you hate peas. So that's exactly what happened. <laughs> that is very close to what my theory is. I mean, okay. It's not identical to that, but it's very mm-hmm. close. My theory is the reason there are so many people who I, I call it innumerate, kind of like illiterate, but we're oh illiterate. clever. The reason there's such a high level of innumeracy in society mm-hmm. is because, in my opinion, it's because math is forced on people. Mm-hmm. Yes, it they're is forced to learn math when they're not mm-hmm. ready to learn math. Yes, and. There's actually some evidence to show that that's true. There isn't a whole lot because they're, almost everybody's forced through the, the public school system. But there are a few mm-hmm. escapees who yep. end up going to private schools. Mm-hmm. And, and a few of those private schools actually allow kids to kind of develop on their own, mm-hmm. at their own pace. Yep. One of them is the Sudbury model. And kids who go through the Sudbury model, you can never predict when they're going to learn math. Mm-hmm. It could be mm-hmm. sometime between age 6 and age 15. Okay. But it's See, going I to like happen. that. It's going to happen at some point. Right. And as long as you don't force the pace, it will happen naturally. Mm-hmm. And when it does happen, here's the most remarkable thing of all. Mm-hmm. When it does happen, they don't just learn like the first year of math. They learn the first six years of math, and it usually takes them about 10 weeks to do it. Wow. And it's because there's no resistance in the way. Yeah. Right? Because you had built up a whole lot of resistance out of that one really humiliating experience yeah. that the second grade teacher put you through. And that was just, at that point, it was just subtraction. Like, I had a, a I just, I was mm-hmm. advertent to subtraction. But yeah. when it came to multiplication, I love multiplication because the tables were already set up. Uh-huh. So it's like everything are, was already, I could, you know, I can draw a line to what the answer is. It, it was just, and then I had memorized the entire multiplication tables mm-hmm. uh, up until 12, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so you know what 11 times 12 is. That's better than most people. Do I? 60, is it? Something no, like not quite. No, okay. <laughs> so you're a bit on the side I don't there. remember what they are, but I did memorize it, though. Close to 130. I know my oh, – okay, my bad. <laughs> yeah, because 12 times 12 is 144. Okay, yes. so. Yeah, very good. Yeah, it's, I was I was mainly in my fives. Subtraction. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, subtraction, nope. We, we stay away from that. I got it. Yes, okay. new. But it's true. I, I really do believe um, that that is what causes most innumeracy. And interestingly enough, Mm-hmm. The reason why kids who are allowed to learn whatever pace they want to, whenever they're ready to, regardless of whatever some curriculum has to say, the reason they're able to pick it up so well and to not develop those kinds of aversions mm-hmm. is because 
they only pick it up when they really need to pick it up. Right. That's how it should be in life. Yeah. With everything. And that's why they can learn it quickly. Because mm-hmm. they don't have time to mess around with security. Exactly. <laughs> I ain't got time for that. <laughs> so they're going to learn it fast. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The other thing that, that the, the Sudbury model people learned is that the best thing you can do for a kid who's trying to teach himself math is to give them the teacher's edition of the math book with the answers in the back. Oh, yes. Oh, I would have loved that. Because when they have that, they learn really fast because they keep mm-hmm. checking themselves, checking themselves. It's not like right. they don't the, – the, the fears that the math teachers have is that if you give the answers t- to the kids along with the questions, then they'll just be lazy and always look up the answers. But that's not the no. way it works when you're driven to actually learn how the stuff works. In my case, I would have memorized the answers, so I would have known my subtraction and addition, like, automatically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In other words, you would have actually used the answers to understand how the whole thing works. Yeah. But now they're like, show your work. And then it's like, <gasps> it's like, yeah. I don't show my work. I just, I memorize. That's how I, that's how I work. Now I'll, I'll take my theory and I'll expand it out and I'll say, I mm-hmm. think it's true for every subject. I agree. I agree. If you force a subject on a kid, you're basically setting that kid up to dislike the subject more and more over time. Yep. That's why pretty much all through high school, didn't go to math class. Mm-hmm. I was just like, nah, I'm going to sleep in. I made sure all my math <laughs> classes were in the morning, and I came in after homeroom. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of the extreme version of it, but it's accurate. Yeah, it is. That really is accurate. <laughs> well, you know me. I go big or go home. And, and I went home. Not just you. <laughs> well, you went home, which was I up. went home. I, well, I stayed home, and then I came in. <laughs> People wonder why it is that so many kids are coming out of school being unable to read, being unable yes. to Yes. Slipping through the cracks and all that stuff. Yeah. Well, let me tell you, the cracks were created by the system. Facts. Facts. When you force kids to do stuff, you got to expect that the result's going to be bad. Mm-hmm. You're, you're asking them to focus their attention. Here we go. Um, on what they don't go like. hurt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and look what comes out of that. Yeah. You get a whole bunch of people who are just not, they're kind of messed up in the head about what they were supposed to be learning in school. Mm-hmm. That's pretty sad, really. It is. Yeah. It is. Now, the good news is the Abraham concept. The good news is that can, only, that can always be reversed. If you're not comfortable. It, well, if you, regardless of whether you're not comfortable, if you decide to change your perspective. Yeah, well. And certainly discomfort is going to be a reason, perhaps, to change your perspective. Yeah. But as you point out, I think you made a pretty good case for the idea. You can retain some degree of comfort and still change your perspective. That's true. Yep. Because you've been doing it right here. You've, you've demonstrated. You yes, know, I did. said, okay, yeah. here's my position, and then you start expanding the position, and then you expand mm-hmm. it further, and it just, well, it, an evolving position is a changing position. It's not fixed. Yes, that's true. That's yeah. true. So clearly you can you can stay in a comfort zone. Now, Joel probably is having a fit if he hears that. <laughs> we won't tell him. Well, actually, let's bring it up next week. Okay. <laughs> Well, I like pushing. I like pushing the buttons with him because he comes up with really interesting insights. He does. He is so creative. Yeah, yeah. And and he'll find a way to draw the strengths from both sides of that argument. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's He's very good at that. that. Yeah. 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 So yeah, definitely. Let's bring that up next time. Okay. So we remember it. (laughs) I know, right? So. Uh, oh, oh, now Jeffrey's jumping in with more stuff. He says, meditation teaches us to become comfortable with uncertainty. Does it? Interesting concept. Jeffrey, explain. I, I can kind of buy into that. Uh-huh. I'm not sure, I'm not sure I'd express it that way. Yeah. I think what I would say is meditation helps me to let go of my concerns and fears about uncertainty. Hmm. Which isn't quite the same thing, but it's it's along the same lines. But if I meditate now, especially now that I have kind of broadened the definition of meditation, kind of right. similar to the way you broaden the definition of comfort zone, I have done yep. the same thing with meditation. Mm-hmm. And so for me, meditation isn't sitting in lotus position. Meditation is something I do when I take a walk. It's something yeah. I do before I go to sleep. It's something mm-hmm. you know, I just I just kind of do it in a variety of different ways. And when I'm meditating, I am getting myself into a space where I can be okay with that thing I didn't like very much. Mm. doesn't mean that I, I like it any better. It's just mm-hmm. I'm okay with it being there, and it goes its way, and I go my way. Yeah. You know, it goes over there, I go over here. 
Mm-hmm. And that's, that's it's kind of a way of letting go of it, saying, you know what, I'm just not going to be a part of that anymore. Yeah. I'm not, not going to be hating it, not going to be loving it. That just See, living in the void. I don't know if I call it a void, but I understand what you mean. It's, it's yeah. sort of an in-between space. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I call that more of, of indifference than void. I, th- I don't think I would call it a void anymore. I think I would call it limbo. 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 How low can you go? <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking more like, you know, heaven, hell, limbo. That's what I'm talking about. Ah, uh, I see. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So the Catholic version. I guess. <laughs> okay. okay. Catholics can write to Alex at LOA.net. <laughs> That's A L Y X. Today.net. <laughs> um, now Nathan points out the surfer thinks he is in control, but he has no idea how deep the water is. Ooh. <laughs> Actual factuals. Although I think the, the really good surfers actually do have an idea of how deep the water is. I feel like well, I, I can tell you from a sense that, cause I have a fear of deep water. Mm-hmm. So, like, in gym class, when I was, you know, you have to swim the length, and I was swimming the length, and I would immediately, even with my eyes closed, it would immediately stop right in the middle, right before it dipped down. Mm. And I would just stop, and I'd be like, no, I know the deepness is coming. I'm not going. With my eyes closed. So, yeah, I don't, you know what, Nathan? I take that back. I don't believe you. (laughs) (laughs) You put your fortune cookie away, sir. No, no, I think his fortune cookie is perfectly <laughs> legitimate because it's all perspective anyway. And that's it really is all perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm reminded of the movie Momentum Generation about the surfers who grew up around the... Oh, yeah, the one you told water. me about? Yeah. Yep. Uh, and I can't remember which one. It's, it's, it's a group of about 10, 12, 14 of them, and I, mm-hmm. I'm never sure which one is which. But mm-hmm. one of them uh, came up with an invention. He invented a special suit for surfing Mm -hmm. and if for whatever reason you find yourself in deep waters and you fell off your board and you're deep down and you're Mm -hmm. struggling for some reason to get up to the surface there are people who have died in fact yeah one one of the the people in the movie died in the 1990s because Mm -hmm. of some situation when he was surfing yeah that undertow is no joke it really isn't he invented a suit that you can inflate instantly that will float you to the surface oh smart and he says, since that suit has been used, there have mm-hmm. been no deaths from surfing. None? None. Wow. Among people who use that suit. Oh, okay. 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 <laughs> Not in general. Well, obviously, general. yeah. <laughs> but among those who use that suit, no one has ever died from uh, from a surfing-related incident, which I think is pretty cool. That is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. And that's going to be somebody who who invents that because he has an understanding of the depth of the water. A developer. What happens under there? What? A developer. He's a developer. That's true. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's developing a concept, <laughs> and he turned that concept into reality, starting with his mind. A life-saving reality. I like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. A very mm-hmm. cool one. Yeah. 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 That, that group of, of kids now, um, men, young, actually not even young men anymore. I think they're in their 40s and 50s now. That's okay. The, wait, wait. First of all, 40s is still young. Let's just... <laughs> Let's well, just talk about well, that for a second. Let's, let's, let's just say they're not the same age when they first started surfing, which was no, they're definitely teens, not. They're definitely, 20s. you know, that's yeah, they definitely have surfers. a couple of gray hairs going on right now. Just a few, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> but what I was trying to get to is that group has really produced some interesting results. Mm-hmm. I mean, one of them is a multi, many, many time world champion surfer. So that's mm-hmm. an interesting one all by itself. Mm-hmm. Um, another one who was one of his early rivals ended up creating a brand new form of marketing. Really? He ultimately got kicked out of the surfing circuit. Ooh. Um, for reasons I can't even remember, but they were detailed in the movie. Mm-hmm. And as a result, he lost his sponsorships. Oh. Yeah, that's, that's how they survive, right? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's how and it he, works. He ended up creating a new concept. He, he went to, uh, after going through some depression, some serious stuff, Mm-hmm. Um, one of his friends in the group helped pull him out. And then he went to, went back to the sponsors and said, you should sponsor me just for being out there as a surfer. Just for being a famous surfer who knows how to surf and who helps promote the world of surfing. And he got them to, to do that. Wow. He created that is a bold. new kind of marketing. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Which is very cool. Yeah. 
You know, and so, and he actually helped others of his friends who were also world-class surfers who ended up leaving and working in dead-end jobs and getting depressed and all kinds of stuff. He mm-hmm. helped them get the sponsorships they needed. So now they're doing their stuff too. So they I'm going to start emailing companies and saying, you should give me money because I'm me. Go for it. I'm going to. <laughs> Give us the result on that. Like, do you not know how awesome I am? Google me. You should. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> me and all my 22 followers. <laughs> well, that, that certainly does make a, a difference. I mean, they, they had more than 22 followers, so you might okay. want to work on that a little bit. But I have like a 100 and something, but I'm, I'm well under. All like, right. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, it's closer then, to 200. It is, but you know. And it isn't even the number that, that matters. What matters is how it, influential are you? Yes. yes if you're true. influential, mm-hmm. buyers are buyers. Yeah. You know, that's all that advertisers really want anyway is buyers. Well, unfortunately, nowadays, your how influential you are is reflected in how many followers you have. That's what they go by. Oh, yeah. That's the number one metric. Yeah. 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 But then again, even that's starting to fall apart. Yeah. I mean... You have things like you've seen the uh, the websites. Usually, they're like news websites that have you know. No, then I unlimited, haven't seen them. They have an unlimited number. Oh, okay. Well, maybe not. <laughs> but they have an unlimited number. Of, you, other websites have it too. They have these huge okay. numbers of ads. You just like an endless scroll of yes. ads. Yes. Yeah. 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 And inevitably, they're all just clickbait. Yep. And even if you click on it, nobody ever reads it. And if you nope. never, and even if you read it, you never interact with the advertising. So it's basically a waste of money by the advertiser. It is. But, it is. But but they have huge numbers of followers. And huh. the followers are measured by the fact that they clicked on the clickbait. Oh, see, that's that's not right. Well, it may not be right, but that's the way that kind of thing has in the past been counted. And what's happening now is that the advertisers are saying, well, I guess it isn't so much the number of followers that counts. Mm-hmm. What matters is how closely are they following you. Mm. Okay. And that's really what the surfer discovered. He said, yeah. these people were really following me because they mm-hmm. knew my reputation. They knew how good of a surfer what I was and so mm-hmm. forth. So it was going to be worthwhile for the sponsors to have me put their logos on my surfboard or whatever mm-hmm. and help promote them in that way. And they would continue to see the logos. And so they would, they would get the market exposure they were looking for, even though I'm not participating in competitions. Hmm. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. I think it makes a lot of sense. I think it's it does, sense. and it reinforces the idea that we create our own realities. Mm. And we're back. we're back. We're back to where we were <laughs> So we we didn't spend a whole lot of time today talking about uh, the role between what we focus on and our health, but we kind mm-hmm. of did it independently. We did kind of like outside of it a little bit. Mm-hmm. We expanded. We we expanded the comfort zone. <laughs> <laughs> To a, a larger topic, but it really does hold true. What we think about, what we focus on, is what we get more of in general, as a general rule of thumb. That's and, true. And everything that happens in between is the journey. Mm, I like that. Yeah, that's kind of a nice way to draw everything to a close. Mm-hmm. So, or as Nathan is saying, our greatest love is in being ourselves. Our greatest gift, rather, is in being ourselves. Facts. Good point, Nathan. I, I am a great gift. You are absolutely right, sir. Well said. Well said. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we, we have a, a a Trump troll here. Oh, yay! <laughs> he says, uh, Trump, my Joyce says, I voted for Trump. Any of you liberals mad? So we're trying to... Why are you trouble. here? <laughs> <laughs> Did you click the wrong button? <laughs> maybe he clicked the right button. Maybe he's mm. leaving his comfort zone. Or maybe he's expanding his comfort zone. Maybe. <laughs> Weird. I sense skepticism there. <laughs> Some trolls just just live their comfort zone is trolling. So I, I suppose I broke the rules by saying you know by recognizing there was a troll. You did. You broke your own rule. It's cool. But but then again, I'm expanding my comfort zone. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so with that uncomfortable thought in mind, thank you very much for bringing up the topic. <laughs> You're welcome, sir. <laughs> Hopefully, Joel will be able to join us next week, and that gets even more fun when he's back. Yep. So we're looking forward to that. But in the meantime, whichever way it goes, whether he's here or next week, you and I will be here. So We'll definitely be here. Definitely tune in next Thursday and tune in every day. Thank you to uh, 
both Jeffrey and Nathan who played a major role in, in the conversation today. We appreciate yep, that. Appreciate and it. Most, most often, most of all, I, I always want to make sure I recognize our listeners because without the listeners, this would not be nearly as much of a fun show to do. Exactly. And, and they keep growing in number. Did, did I tell you what the latest numbers are? No. What are the latest numbers? When I add the YouTube numbers and the um, podcast numbers together, we're averaging 325 listeners per episode now. Ooh, yes. We are Come growing. through. It's coming going. in hot. Just, just like a couple months ago, it was like 275. It's it's coming. It's good. Yeah, I noticed how, how much the uh, YouTube uh, subscribers have been going up since we yep. started hashtagging. Yep, it definitely has played a big mm-hmm. role. So thank you very much for that. Appreciate that. New T-shirt. Alice is always right. Is there going to be a, a new hashtag too? Do we add that to the show every time? Oh, see, hashtag. that was my idea, folks. Mark that one down. <laughs> Walt won. <laughs> <laughs> so now that I've had my game for the day, thank you very much for listening, everybody. We'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody.